So hi everyone, hi, welcome again to another Saturday live stream. Mike Rob Hunter here. I'm happy that you can join again this week. Uh, yes, uh, I just had a little shock at the beginning because as I just wanted to start it to stream, my program crashed, so I had to restart it again. <laughs> but I think uh, I hope that I am actually now online and everything works well. Um, I hope that this is not going to happen again. But if it does happen again, like it happened a few weeks ago, then please do uh, not leave, but uh, check again. I might have to restart the stream, maybe under a different link. Um, yeah, well, in any case, um, I'm happy that the sound seems to be okay. Um, yes, um, and uh, today I want uh, to do another um, yeah plant uh, preparation. This was actually a request. Uh, somebody last week, uh, or was it two weeks ago, asked me, is it not possible to prepare to microtome and to make some permanent slides of plant stem cross sections? Um, and uh, indeed, um, I tried a few hours ago, uh, today in the morning, my time. Um, I actually tried that and I was surprised that it actually worked better than I expected. I got some very beautiful results and I would like uh, to share that uh, with you today. Um, yeah, so I see that uh, many of you or some of you have already started to join in. Um, some of you might be new, some of many of you might be returning. Um, yeah, so um, usually what I do at the beginning, I will send a hello all around the world. I'll read off um, yeah, the places where you came from from um, because it takes a couple of minutes uh, for more and more people to join in so there's a hello from Lebanon uh, from Vietnam from Paris and um, yeah from Germany um, from Turkey yes yeah, so it's uh, very nice from Tennessee the United States and uh, yeah from England Netherlands um, well, yeah the video and the sound works good uh, thank you very much for the feedback from New Zealand uh, yeah Münsterland in Germany okay and Australia Okay, um, England, uh, New Zealand again, um, yeah, so Netherlands, Belgium, all over the world, yeah, Toronto in Canada, okay, so um, welcome everyone, um, yeah, uh, here in Central Europe, uh, where I'm right now, it's been snowing, I'm from Austria, um, it's been snowing uh, quite a bit, um, and actually I wanted to put some snowflakes under the microscope, um, but uh, the temperature was not quite cold enough. Uh, I hope I'm still able to do that. It is possible to make snowflake impressions on nail polish. Um, and that is actually also something that I would like to do um, in the future. But today, um, yeah, I'm going to focus mainly on um, yeah, those things that I have here. Um, and But before I do that, um, I do want to show you something under the microscope um, because I would like to pick up on that what I've, uh, we've done a couple of uh, weeks ago. I don't know if some of you remember this here. Um, this here is, um, yeah, these are the so-called the, the veins um, of, uh, yeah, of a maple leaf. Um, I did a, a preparation a couple of weeks ago and uh, I made a permanent mount. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it looks uh, okay. Yeah, so um, there are not a lot of bubbles or there are actually no bubbles. Um, so the PVA glue that um, I used uh, actually seems to work quite well. I'll be using the same glue uh, today um, again to make a permanent mount. Yeah? So I'm actually quite happy that uh, yeah, the permanent uh, slide that I made is actually relatively stable. And uh, for those of you who um, joined in last week, um, if you remember, I did some staining of yeast cells. So I've also got them over here. Yeah, and here they are. The yeast cells, of course, are quite a bit smaller. Yeah, so I have to go up with the magnification here. Um, turn up the light a little bit. Go up with the magnification again, and uh, you can see that uh, the yeast cells also yeah, are doing fine. So, yeah, I need to turn up the brightness a little bit here, the condenser. Yeah, so you see that uh, even the yeast cells, the stained yeast cells here, are are quite stable in this PVA glue. Yeah, so I think um, I'll be using I'll be using the same mounting medium, the same glue again today, um, and um, yeah, um, and that's basically what I would like to do. So I'm going to be using again mesaline blue staining on the plant plant tissues. Okay, so what I would like uh, to um, also encourage um, everyone um, is is if you um, in, yeah if you want to have, if you have any questions or any comments please uh, do post them in the chat section. Um, if you have a specific uh, question or, um, directed to me, please uh, put an at Oliver or at Micropunter at the front so that it's more easy for me to find it. If I overlook something, please do not um, yeah be sad about it. Uh, um, sometimes it does happen that I overlook a few comments. Uh, yeah, but. Um, in any case, um, 
Yeah, and if even if it is not directly um, uh, topic related, as long as it's microscopy related, um, I'll be attempting to answer it. So let's go back here again, and let's. Uh, I want to give you a little bit um, of an overview here. Okay, um, so. Um, what I've got here is, is uh, this here is a, uh, a leaf uh, that one of my viewers sent me a few months ago. And um, while I already made a video about this, I still want to show this to you because they are microscopic trick combs. These are plant here um, on the bottom that I would like to show you um, again today. So they look very nice. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, many of you or some of you might have already found or seen trick combs before um, in Reddit, for example. Um, yeah, occasionally um, or in forums, people post questions um, and they ask, what is that? But these are the plant here. So I'm going to show that to you. And um, yet more important is actually the main thing today is, is I've got some plant tissue here preserved in alcohol. Okay, I need to tell you a little bit um, about this here. This um, jar is approximately 20 years old to zero, maybe even older. <laughs> okay, um, and uh, I made this uh, quite a long time ago. And um, what I've done is, is uh, these, these are the, the leaves, not only, but mostly the leaves, the leaves and stems of a tulip flower. Um, and uh, um, yeah, because they're green, I put them into alcohol and uh, this kind of washed out the green chlorophyll and then exchanged uh, the alcohol again. Um, and uh, yeah, I kept on doing that until no more um, yeah, pigment came out. And now it looks white. Yeah, and it's been in this jar now for, for quite, a, quite a long time. Um, occasionally, I have taken out a sample uh, to do a little cross-section, um, but I have not done a lot of staining with that. And I said, okay, why not uh, try that today? Okay? And I was quite happy that uh, essentially, um, yeah, it was uh, quite, uh, quite successful. Yeah. So um, this is uh, just uh, regular, uh, regular alcohol. Yeah? And this kind of also shows that uh, yeah, uh, specimens are able to store quite, uh, quite a long time. Now, um, the problem with alcohol is, is that um, it is very volatile. So it evaporates quickly. And when it evaporates, it starts to shrink. So um, I have to be a little bit quick um, in doing that. Um, and I have to, yeah. Um, stain it immediately and uh, then also put it into a little bit of water um, to make sure that uh, the alcohol is replaced with water and then I can put it on the slide and um, yeah then I also would like to mount it okay so that is kind of the, the thing that I'll be using the stain that I'll be using a non-labeled bottle many of you already know because one of my favorite stains this is mesaline blue uh, mesaline blue is a yeah, very strong stain um, of course it's not concentrated but um, this one is a um, so-called Löffler's solution, and it is already a ready-made mixture of, of the stain, um, which contains also a little bit of alcohol and also potassium hydroxide, um, apparently. And uh, yeah, it's basically just in the right concentration that you can apply it directly on a specimen for staining. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the mounting medium that I'll be using. It's Elmer's uh, clear glue. Uh, many of you might already know this because I've uh, yeah, been using this uh, frequently in the past as well. Um, the company produces clear glue and also white glue. Do get the clear glue and it's ridiculously cheap. <laughs> um, I bought it over Amazon. Yeah. And what I've done is, is because it was still a little bit too thick, um, I filled uh, some of it over into a dropper bottle like this and then I added a little bit of tap water and mixed it um, so that it becomes a little bit less viscous and a, viscous and a little bit less, uh, less thick. Um, I'll be using this microtome, which you probably or some of you also already know to cut it. And yeah, I'll use a razor blade here for, for cutting it. Okay. So, and what I'll be doing already is I'll be, um, yeah, um, basically uh, going through some of the questions here. The first question is, can you use two different colors of staining in one permanent mount? For example, red and blue. Yes, uh, this can be done. And it is also done. Um, I have not done this uh, so, uh, so much, um, but yes, indeed, this is done also. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Euromax as a brand for a trinocular microscope? Do you think it's okay for a beginner? I can't afford an Olympus. Okay. Um, if you're interested in Euromax microscopes, I do have a second channel. Um, there is a link somewhere. It's called the Microbe Hunter Microscopy. And uh, this second channel, um, I'm actually uh, doing review videos, or I have done review videos of Euromax microscopes. Okay, um, and um, yeah, they're, um, they have a whole variety of different models. Uh, 
do check out uh, my other channel, please. Uh, and I've made some in-depth uh, reviews uh, um, yeah, of some of the Euromax uh, microscopes. Okay, so this is uh, something that I um, would uh, like uh, to say. The good thing about um, uh, buying uh, uh, microscopes uh, from companies like uh, the, the well-known brands and also Euromax is that you get some support. Okay, so that's actually a good thing. Yeah. So, um, so I'm I'm going to um, yeah. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm just going to get started. Okay, so I'm going to open this here and um, yeah. yeah, alcohol. Okay, um, just concentrated alcohol and um, I'm going to pull out one of those stems in here um, and uh, that's just the stem of, um, of a tulip and when you put something into alcohol, it will actually become a little bit harder. Yeah, it's, it's actually a little bit um, harder and this actually makes it also easier uh, to cut. Okay, um, I'll put it in here. I have to tighten the, the, the little clamp here. Okay, but the problem again is is that it likes to shrink um, as the alcohol evaporates. Yeah? So this is not such a nice uh, thing. Yeah, but at the same time it makes cutting a little bit easier. However, what I've uh, found out in the morning today is is that um, essentially, yeah, it's still. A little bit difficult to do because the outside is uh, a little bit harder than on the inside yeah so but I have now basically re removed the top part here it's uh, still too thick but now the top part is a little bit flush I will turn the bottom here okay this will uh, push out the specimen a little bit and uh, then um, yeah I can hopefully make a thin cut yeah here and uh, yeah, I hope it works. Uh, it's still a little bit thick. Okay, I don't know if you're able to see it. I'll put it in here. Okay, and this is trial and error. The more often you do that, um, the more uh, likely it is that uh, you're actually going to, yeah, sometimes it's not enough because it starts to shrink as the alcohol evaporates. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here I got one, another one. But what I will be doing now is, is because it will start to evaporate very quickly, is, is I will add, um, oh, I dropped it. Here it is. Okay. I will add a little bit of the staining solution right away to prevent it from completely drying out. Okay. You don't need a lot. Yeah. So, and I'll keep on doing this a few times, uh, hoping that um, yeah, uh, that uh, a few of them will be okay. Yeah. And I actually think that because it's in alcohol, it is actually a little bit easier to cut than um, if fresh. Okay, here we go again. So, and this uh, takes patience. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, maybe this one is not, okay, here we go, here's another one. And um, just leaving it in there for a few minutes uh, should be actually enough. Okay, sometimes um, they also look nice if it's not too thin. Uh, in one of my previous um, videos, I actually uh, showed you some commercial permanent slides and they were cut too thin and they didn't look quite nice. Yeah. So for this reason, um, yeah, it is a little bit trial and error. See, and sometimes um, I, I lose it and I don't know where it is. Okay. Maybe it's on the surface here. No. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. Always use a fresh razor blade because uh, yeah, it starts to become blunt very quickly. And then we're going to hope uh, that a few of them actually will uh, produce a nice result. And I do also have some other parts of the plant uh, in here as well that I would also like to try. Okay, I think we're, I'm just going to leave it at that now. Um, I'm going to remove this again. Okay, and I'm just going to put it back. And uh, maybe you can, uh, you don't see it so much, 
but it did shrink a little bit. So it goes back into the container. Okay, and it's going to soak up the alcohol again. And uh, yeah, this one over here, um, I'm going to maybe add a little bit more stain. Actually, it's probably not necessary, but who knows. Um, and uh, then um, what I'm going to do then is, is because there's still a lot of alcohol in here, is I'm going to rinse everything by adding a little bit of water. And this water will flush away um, any excess uh, stain. Um, it will remove the alcohol. Um, the, the cells will con soak, soak up the water, um, so they will not shrink anymore as much when they dry. Um, and uh, then I can mount them. I'm going to check them first under the microscope and then I'm going to um, mount them. And in the meantime, as I'm giving it maybe a minute or so more, um, I'm going to read through um, the comments again here. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much for your response. I will check out your other channel about the reviews. Yes, uh, please do so, okay? Um, so you have to go back in time again. Uh, I re reviewed several uh, Euromax microscopes and I also included the links um, yeah, uh, to them. Yeah. Um, the previous comment is not a question. I don't, okay, uh, okay. Um, what is the function of the trichomes of, of a leaf? Um, okay, trichomes, which we're going to have a look um, at later, are a plant here on the bottom side of a leaf. And uh, one of the, and it is, let's put it this way, it is not uncommon um, for those plant hairs to actually reduce the loss of water uh, from a leaf. Um, so uh, the leaves on the bottom side, what they have so-called stomae, stomata, uh, stomates. These are openings in the leaf that can open and close uh, to allow um, uh, carbon dioxide to go in and, and, um, yeah, um, and uh, oxygen gas, which was made by photosynthesis, to go out. And uh, those openings, however, um, also will result in a loss of water vapor and the leaves will dry out. And in order to prevent this or reduce this possibility, some leaves have uh, those here on the bottom, uh, kind of half covering up the stomates to prevent a little bit the diffusion of, 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 uh, of water vapor. So it, it helps in water con conservation. Yeah? So, okay, um, yeah. Yes, there has been apparently a question about this device here. Okay, this here is referred to as a microtome. I'm just gonna talk a little bit more um, as, until the staining is complete. And uh, those microtomes, um, they come in different sizes and shapes. This one over here is, was actually a pretty cheap one. Um, not the best quality, but it kind of works. And the reason why I'm still using this, even though, I don't know, you see it's a little bit wobbly and the tolerances are not, yeah. But the reason why I'm still using this is, is because it's one of the few microtomes which actually has a screw over here, um, which um, allows you to clamp the specimen because my other microtome that I have, which actually is of a higher quality, <laughs> does not have this clamp. Yeah? And uh, then you have to glue in the specimen somehow, yeah. Um, and this clamp, however, is, is very practical. Yeah. And then when you turn it, uh, then you're kind of advancing it um, all the time. And this knife that I've got here, well, knife, well, <laughs> this is just a regular razor blade and I 3D printed um, this handle over here. Yeah. So I'm just going to show it to you. Yeah. You carefully, uh, you got to be super careful here that you don't hurt yourself. So it's a homemade uh, 3D printed thing. And, and you see over here, there's this razor blade and you need to put it into a handle because otherwise the blade is too flexible and it's gonna bend and it's not gonna cut straight. So you do need some kind of a rigid support uh, for the razor blade. Yeah, otherwise it's not possible to get get horizontal cuts. It's already difficult as it is <clears throat> because the this little part here of the razor blade is also flexible. Yeah, so if you kind of press down, then it also kind of bends a little bit, and then you do not get uh, even cuts either. Yeah, so um, try to cut it without a, a lot of pressure. But you need some kind of a a, a support, a rigid support. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, there are, there are a variety of this, different ones. Um, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, if you check this channel, I actually um, showed you um, yeah, a, a very different, uh, different one um, as well. And also in my other channel, um, this micro hunter microscopy channel where I'm doing the reviews, I also um, yeah, show you some of the homemade microtomes that I made. And so you, you'll find plenty of resources if you're interested in this. Okay. 
Um, is it possible to view living plant cells? The answer is clearly yes. Now, I don't have one here right now, um, but uh, um, yes, it is possible to do that. Um, and uh, sometimes in time lapse, um, you can actually see quite well the, the, the cell organelles moving around. So for example, onion cells um, are quite, uh, quite good. Um, water plants like Elodia, you can see the movement of the chloroplasts. Um, I recommend that um, yeah, you can make a video um, in time lapse and you speed it up and then you're able to see the slow movement much faster. It looks uh, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah? So um, should I prepare for my exam tomorrow or watch your video? I can actually tell you the answer. I'm a teacher, so prepare for your exam because this video will be available online uh, later anyway. Okay, so you can always watch it later on. Okay, um, yeah, so you, I ordered some polarization filters from uh, Temu. I followed the steps you showed in your videos, but the photo is blurry, directly looking through the microscope and with a camera. Hmm, it, yeah, difficult to say what the reason is. It generally, if you want to use polarization, you work with low magnifications, okay? Uh, because any, um, any filters that you put between into the light path will actually disturb the image um, a little bit. So I, I declare this uh, as finished now. And what I'm gonna do now is, is look, uh, this is my, my water bottle here. And uh, this is what I'm gonna do now, okay? So, and uh, you already notice the following, you notice that the, the actual yeah, little cross sections are stained, quite dark, okay? And usually what happens is that the cells, they will um, become more blue, they will attract the stain and will actually become darker than the surrounding medium. So, and having done that, um, the water is not only important for kind of removing the stain, but also for removing the alcohol, yeah, so this is also, that's why I'm also going to leave it in here um, a little bit so that uh, the alcohol is going to be removed. I do also have a pipette for removing any, oh, for removing any excess water. And I do need some kind of a, okay, a, a, some kind of a trash. You know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use simply my tissue paper here. I'm going to simply uh, absorb any excess water here because I did add a little bit too much. Okay, just gonna put it like this. Otherwise it's not practical having too much water here. Okay. And uh, based on the, on the color, I can already estimate the thickness because some of them are a little bit darker than others and the darker ones are a little bit thicker. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, quite, quite simple. I'm going to grab uh, one of those little cross sections Okay, carefully, you don't want to damage it too much. You put it on here and you see that it kind of likes to fold back up, uh, upon itself. So this, is the re this is kind of the, 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 the delicate part here. Um, yeah, let me, let, but it is a little bit essential that it's flat. But I, I will try something else here. This is uh, always a problem with the, uh, yeah, so. That's, that's the way we do that, okay? And then we simply remove any excess again. Um, yeah, actually I could have left it because I'm going to simply put a cover glass on top here. Then let's have a look um, how nice or not so nice it actually looks like. Okay, and uh, at, least I was, uh, I at least I was positively surprised today in the morning. Um, that it did kind of look nice. That's why the thumbnail picture, for example, I've, I've made today in the morning. But it depends again a lot on on um, yeah on the thickness of this. Let's add a little more water here on the side. Okay, so you do not want the cover glass to float. Obviously, any excess of liquid should be removed. I do not want to flood the microscope. Let's uh, give it a try. Um, let me yeah, let me do the following. I switch over to the scope view again. So let's remove. Let's remove all of these things, these two slides. This was the, uh, the leaf preparation from a few weeks ago and the yeast cells. Now let's put this in here. So, and I would like to see how, what do I see here? Okay, well, mm, yeah, it's a little too thin, I would say. But, up, oh, I bumped it again here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the polarization the DIC part and I'm going to, well, no, I'm not happy. 
I have to tell you, um, this was actually much nicer in the morning. Maybe I did rinse it a little bit too much, or maybe the yeah um, cross section is a little bit too thin. Okay, but you know what? Uh, we're just going to compare it then later. Uh, what I'm able to see here is no, well, yeah. Yeah, I think it was a little bit cut too thin, thinly. You see over here um, the cells and some of the cells um, actually look blue, others look white. And I think the reason is, is whether the cells are actually cut open or not. Yeah, so if I cut it too thin, then the cells actually are have lost their cell contents and uh, were cut open. And um, yeah, this looks, like, this looks a little bit better right now again. Yes, so actually, yeah, this magnification looks better. And what we're able to see now is the following. I'm going to show you something here because there are some other interesting features. Uh, so it's a short biology lesson maybe what I'm going to give you now because there are a couple of other interesting features that you might see that uh, you might overlook otherwise. And I would like to explain this to you. Okay, so um, here we go. And I will switch on my arrow now. Where is my arrow? Here is the arrow. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay, so of course uh, these round things here, these are of course the cells and on the outside you have the cell wall, plant cells have a cell wall. But let's look at this one over here. Here on the outside we have the cell wall, but look at this funny thing on the inside here, okay? Look at this, um, this one over here as well. Yeah. Uh, this one over here as well, what in the world could that be? Well, I'm pretty sure that this is the cell membrane which has separated from the cell wall. Yeah, and why would it why would it do that? Okay, that you might wonder. Okay, look here as well. So essentially what you have is is, is that in here this is the cell's contents, the cytoplasm. And uh, it, the cell membrane separated. Why would it do that? Well, because um, I, pl I placed the plant uh, uh, tissue into alcohol. And the alcohol causes uh, water loss. Um, it's well known that uh, when you put specimens into alcohol, uh, that uh, it will basically suck out the water from the cells and it will cause it to, to also to shrivel up. And this is the reason why um, in, in certain plant cells, um, yeah, like algae, for example, if you treat them with alcohol, that doesn't work very well because they will start to shrivel up too much. Right. And here what we see is, is that the cell walls were very strong. They maintained their shape, um, but actually the, the, the cell contents itself uh, shrunk yeah, and shriveled up. And uh, that's why what we see here, this seems to be, I'm, I'm kind of sure, certain about this, is, is uh, the, the cell membrane. We see the same thing happening when you, for example, um, put onion cells uh, um, under um, into salt water, for example. Yeah. So then you also have the plasmolysis happening. The cell walls will actually stay the same, but then the cell membranes will separate. But we see this quite well here because apparently the, the methylene blue stained the cell membrane quite well. Yeah. So this is uh, this is actually quite a quite a uh, quite a nice observation here. Yeah. So I uh, just want to go uh, go back again into the, the to the to the comments here. Um, I, I forgot where I stopped. Yeah. Um, this, I have to scroll up a little bit. Uh, yeah, there were so many comments here, which is nice. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, the previous comment. Okay. What is the function of the trichomes? I'll answer that. It seems like the alcohol washed out the color of the stems and the leaves. This yeah, it, it still has retained some of it, but it is correct that uh, um, if you wash it too much, then you're going to lose uh, some of the stain. Yeah? I wonder how we can use a microtome for leaf specimens. Um, I will try to show, I will do that next, okay? Um, I, you need a carrot for this, okay? And you need to sandwich the leaf um, in, into the carrot. I have not tried this yet, so no promises that this is gonna work well. Okay, um, but I'm gonna try this as well. Okay, is it possible to view a living plant cell? Okay, that's I think I already answered this. I'm jumping all over the place. Okay. Um, do you have the link to the STL code for the three printing of the handle of the microtome? Um, I got the ST. I actually I did the following. I I googled it. There is a a web page. So the question is is. Uh, 
um, the STL for this one over here. I'd have to find it, but actually I got it from Thingiverse, and they've got many of those. Um, they've got many of those, uh, yeah, things uh, because uh, yeah, it's yeah, you have to just uh, search for them. Many different sizes and shapes, yeah. Um, how do I join the micro? Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, yes, uh, okay, about the Microbe Hunter forum, uh, sorry about this, uh, but uh, there are so many spam registrations that I'm getting right now, okay? Um, so if you want to join the forum, please do, um, I mean, when, if you sent me an email, I should have actually uh, allowed you to go in because usually that's what I do. But um, the problem that I have right now is so many spam registrations. And uh, now with AI, there is this uh, one um, question that I'm asking, um, yeah, why do you want to join the forum? And then I've, I'm seeing recently now that also some um, automated um, <laughs> responses are included there. But please do send me an email um, and uh, with your login name and then I you uh, that I give absolute priority, okay? Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so Thingiverse is the place to look. And the, I don't know, I, this was basically just one of, of many, uh, many of them that I actually uh, found. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to first do a, I'm going to leave the other uh, specimens in there. I'm going to make a permanent mount later. Or I'm going to try to do one. And I would like to try now the the, the leaf, okay? Um, so I'm going to, yeah, I could leave it in here as well. I'm just going to put this away. And now this is where the fun starts a little bit because we have, of course, the challenge of how I'm going to put a leaf into the microtome. Yeah. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit again. And I do have also a leaf in here. Um, I have to tell you, I have not tried it with a leaf with a leaf yet. Okay. But that is essentially one of the leaves. Way too big, way too thin. And I will tell you what the challenge is. If I make a thin cut, um, yeah, sometimes it's very, very difficult to actually place it on the slide in such a way that it's right on the edge, right? So this is going to be kind of difficult, I guess. Huh? So, um, and in order to do that, I do need a, how do you call this? Uh, a scissor. Where's my scissor? Here we go. Okay. So, um, and so what I will do now is, is I will simply do it like this. Okay, this uh, the rest uh, goes back here. Yeah. This one is going to start drying out relatively quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried. So I might actually have to hurry up a little bit here. So um, we now need, I now need to make a, a specimen holder. Okay, so this is going to, this carrot is going to be my, my specimen holder for, for the leaf. It's going to go in here into the, yeah, into the, um, this one over here and um, I have to make it a little more thin. So I will slice it like this. And now I'm going to put the leaf in here. And then I'm going to hope for the best that this actually works. Okay. So let's move this away. This is going to be a challenge because, as you might already know, I'm a little bit. I uh, do have a slightly bad vision. It means I actually need glasses <laughs> to see this a little bit better. So I'm clamping it now again. Okay. There's an, another problem. If you clamp it like this, look, then the pressure is on the bottom, but the top part, hmm, yeah, it's kind of separated. Okay. So that's a little bit of another problem that I have. So let's uh, give this here now I try. So. Okay, the first one here. So let's remove this. This is trash. I'm now going to advance it out a little bit. I do need another, I do need another Petri dish for the staining part. Okay, and let's try, see, I got a little bit of the carrot, but not of the leaf. And now, oh. This was bad. Yeah, I went down here a little bit. So, and this is not the, the challenge because it is so difficult, so thin that I might have a problem finding it. Um, yeah, and hmm, yeah, here it is. It's too thick still. 
So let's try it again. Concentration. This might have actually worked. Yeah. So let's remove the carrot. And uh, this little thingy here, that's it. But again, um, I'm kind of concerned a little bit that because it is so thin that, let me add some, some stain first, that uh, I might have actually a problem getting it on the edge. Okay, this might be actually the, the most difficult part here. So again here, okay. Hmm. So, yes, here it, here's another one. It's not the full length, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if I get some carried along as well, it doesn't matter so much either. Uh, but I don't see it. Okay. So I'm going to try the last one here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's still... So, it's... Uh, yeah, if if the cross section is is too high, then um, I'm not able to to yeah. Let's put it this way. <laughs> let let me use this here as an example here. Yeah, if this were now the the, the cross section of, of of the leaf, um, when I put it on the microscope slide, it's gonna fall over, and I'm going to see the leaf uh, from the side. Okay, and and that uh, then I'm not able to actually see the cells very well. Huh? Um, so this is a little bit the the, the, the worry that I have. Um, so, but uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna see. Yeah, that's why I like doing these things. It's a little bit of experimentation as well. Okay, and uh, maybe I'm not going to add some water here. I'm just going to try this here directly. This is very thick. Yeah. And here is another one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to simply add maybe a little bit of water directly to this because I do need some water for the cover glass. Cover glass goes on top. It's probably going to be, yeah, it's, it's, it's too thick. Okay, but we're just going to use this as a, as a demonstration. So maybe, maybe this one is on, on the edge. I cannot see that well. Okay, um, let's, let's give it a try. Um, I need to change over to the scope view and let's have a look. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, it's too thick. But let me focus first and well, yeah, I'm, I'm not seeing it from the side. This is now a top or bottom view but I think I read somewhere in the, f somebody was actually asking for some stomates. Maybe we're able to see at least those. So, but it's the first one, what's, what's the second one? Ah, that's a nice one. This one did not fully stain yet. That's always interesting. But we're seeing again a top and bottom view. And the third one is over here. Ah. Not so, not so nice. Yeah, the reason is, is because you see the sections, even though they're, yeah, yeah, they're essentially, I was not able to, to balance them right on the edge. Here's the, here's the other one. Yeah, so that's a little bit, it's more of a, um, the problem is more, how do I get it to the side? Okay. But what I can try to do in this case anyway, maybe we're able to see a little bit more when we go in a little bit here. Oh yeah. I wonder if those dark dots that you see over here are the nuclei of the cells. This could be it. And what do we see? We so I don't know, I think somebody in the in the forum asked for asked for stomates. The the openings that I, I talked about before. Yeah, I can see those, at least the guards, so-called guard cells, um, are quite nicely visible. Let me show you. Um, 
Where are they? I've seen several of them. I just have to find them. The guard cells are the cells that can be found left and right of the stormates. Let me find them. Let me find them. You see the multiple cell layers here, here, here they are. That's it. Two of them. So let me explain this. Okay. Yes. I mean, I know it, it's not the it's not the nicest example, and I actually wanted to show you the the view from 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 the edge, and not from the top or bottom. But at least we're able to see something over here um, as well. Yeah. So I just show that to you again. A little bit of a biology lesson. Um, the the structure that you see over here, um, the left one over here, that is a so-called a guard cell, um, and the right one over here is another guard cell. And the dark areas that you see here, these are the nuclei of the two guard cells. And the opening into the leaf is between those two guard cells, which I cannot see now. And uh, this is the opening that is able to open and close, right? Um, to allow gas exchange, uh, carbon dioxide to enter the leaf and oxygen and water vapor to exit the leaf. Yeah? So this is basically, I mean, at least we're able to see that. Yeah? Um, and the methylene blue staining actually made the, uh, made the nuclei visible. Yeah. So this is a little bit, um, yeah, um, not not such a successful example here because I actually wanted to show you the leaf uh, from the side. But as I kind of worried, um, expected, and as I was worried, it's uh, difficult to actually balance it on on, on the edge. Okay, um, yeah. So this is a little bit the thing here. I, I quickly go through. Um, um, yeah, email address. Uh, um, you find it also online. It's editor editor at microbehunter.com editor at microbehunter.com um, yeah and uh, then the emails uh, will come to me you can actually also find it on on, on the home page yeah? so editor at microbehunter.com what is the magnification um, you can actually see the magnification or at least the objective that i'm using always up here okay uh, this one here now is a um, um, a uh, 40 times magnifying object objective okay so this is the thing so um now what? Um, what I'll do now is I want to ma actually mount some of the cross uh, stem cross sections, okay? Um, and um, then uh, maybe next week or in two weeks when the glue has dried, when the mounting medium has dried, we can have a look um, at it again. So let's put this away. And um, yeah, let's start to make a few, a few um, specimens here, okay? Um, and uh, I need a slide, a microscope slide, and uh, yeah, we're going to hope for the best that this actually works. So um, I always uh, prepare my cover glasses first because you have to wipe them because unfortunately they are not always very clean. So I just the question is where do I put it? I'm going to put a lid on top here, so in okay, case so that don't spill it because then I really have a mess. I do, I do make a little bit of, of space here. You know, another thing that I'm going to do, maybe, is I'm just going to lower this a little bit. So maybe you can see this. I've got a camera here. This is actually for, yeah, you can. So I think that, ah, no, 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 it's tilting. It's tilting over, oh, unfortunately. Okay, that's, it's, it's, now, now it's kind of a little stable. Okay, here we go. I need to maybe add a little bit of weight, <laughs> extra weight. Let me focus this. It does have this auto focus ability as well. So, okay, here we go. Um, yeah, so this is uh, the first cover glass. Um, I prepare the other cover glass as well. And uh, yeah, also wipe it quickly. Okay, um, let's clean away. Let's make a little bit of some order. Okay, and here we go. Um, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to first uh, place a little bit of mounting medium um, directly on the slide. And the good thing is the following. This is a water-based mounting medium, okay? The glue is water-based. And this means that I can uh, take uh, the specimen, which is also water-based, and actually they're compatible. Uh, many mounting media, the resin-based mounting media, are highly hydrophobic. So this means that you cannot do that. You cannot take a moist specimen, put it into a hydrophobic mounting medium. It's not going to work. Um, it's not going to be stable. It's going to start forming bubbles. It's going to turn cloudy and 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 all sorts of things. Huh? 
So, um, yeah, usually uh, there are a little bit of few bubbles, but uh, yeah, I hope that this is gonna be fine. So next thing, what I do is, is I need a tissue paper because of course, even though water doesn't hurt, um, I do not want to have too much water because otherwise I'm not able, the glue is not able to reach the specimen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this out. I'm going to put it here quickly on the tissue paper to remove the excess water. I'm gonna place it into here. And I hope that it's covered in mounting medium and it is. Otherwise you can always put a small drop on the top. On top. Um, okay. It's really important that it's uh, completely covered. So it did sink down a little bit. Then go comes a cover glass and you let capillary action do the rest. Maybe you want to yeah? simply carefully align it as well. And yeah, then you basically store it horizontally for a couple of days um, until the mounting medium has uh, completely uh, dried. Um, we can look at it uh, also right now, uh, however, only under low magnification because sometimes there is a little bit of glue coming out on the side here. And uh, then um, it, there's always the danger that uh, the objective is going to touch the glue and then you have to clean the objective. Okay, so yeah, let's have a look here yeah. and let's see how nice or not so nice this one looks like. Microscope, here we go. Let's go here again. A little bit too much, too much light. Um, let's do away the arrow. And let's center it. Ah, ah, interesting, also interesting. Maybe still too much light. Let's go up with the magnification here. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh -huh. And we see the different parts have been stained differently. Uh -huh. I do see one thing. I do see that compared to, to the today in the morning, um, it does not quite stain quite as strongly and I think the reason is, is because indeed I did wash it a little bit too much in yeah, um, yeah in, in, in water, but um, yeah, the vascular bundles do stain quite nicely. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna maybe I'm gonna try it um, differently again by not rinsing it too much. So these here are the vascular bundles. So that's basically the xylem and the phloem where the substances are transported up and down the, um, yeah, up and down the, um, the stem. Yeah. And because a, the plant is a so-called a monocot plant, therefore those vascular bundles are scattered throughout the stem and not arranged in a circular way, just like for example, in, in a sunflower. Oh, it's also interesting. Look, what, what cells are these here? Ah, oh, that's also interesting. Okay, I need to explain this here. <laughs> this I need to explain. That that's interesting. Um, look how the cells. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why, why why does it look like this? This is a little bit of an artifact. What we have here. Um, where where is this? Okay. So this here is um, at the top. I where is the arrow here? Can I move the arrow? Yes. So this here is at the top. That is the, this here is the outside um, of the stem. But do you see those cells here? These are actually the outer layer that kind of, uh, yeah, was folded over. Yeah, so it actually, <laughs> these are, that's an outer uh, cell layer, which I accidentally ripped off and then it's folded over and that's why it looks like this. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> So that's actually the thing. So um, yeah, I'm going to leave this here now. Um, I don't know. Um, hmm. um, I'm, I'm going to try the following now. Um, so this one is uh, the one with the mounting medium. I'm going to now try a little um, variation of this. The one that I had before. Look at this. This is the one where, with the water, okay? The first one. And I see that this one also was not quite well stained. Hmm. Maybe because I washed it too long and today in the morning, um, yeah, it simply looked nicer. So what I'm going to do now is the following is I'm going to add some stain. Yeah, right on the microscope slide. I need, I need my pipette. So that's basically what I'm going to be using. Um, and always be careful when you add stuff directly 
um, under the microscope because you don't want to contaminate yeah, anything. But I just show you what I'm doing right now here. Okay. So. Okay, you get that? Okay. So this is I'm going to close this here again. So and now um, let's go back to the scope view. Let's go a little bit to the to here to the edge, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's have a look if if um, if the parts stay in here a little bit darker. I mean, it did stain a little bit, but honestly, it could could look a little bit more intense. Let's see what happens if I when I add the thing directly here. Okay. Need a steady hand. Then you let capillary action do the rest. Then you can hope that. Let's see where. Where is ah, here? It is. Here is the the, the stain. It has not yet reached the. Um, yeah, uh, I need. I, I probably need to add a little bit more stain. It's slowly diffusing over, but um, yeah, not fast enough according to my taste. So I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to just a second, I need to. So, so here we go. And let's add a little bit more. So, and uh, yeah, let's uh, have, let's wait a little bit. And it, as I wait, uh, yeah, let's see if uh, it starts to stain a little bit better. So there are a couple of questions. Um, um, where is, I don't, for, I forgot where I left off. Uh, where are the stomata located on a leaf? They're located on the bottom side of a leaf. Yeah. Okay. And these are the openings. Why on the bottom side? Because if they were on the top side, uh, the, uh, the leaves would dry out too quickly. I remember that the leaves and stems that were in the alcohol had lost their color. Why is that? Yes. The reason why they lost their color is this because the chlorophyll, which is the green pigment in leaves and stems, is uh, uh, dissolves in alcohol. So when you take a leaf and when you put it into alcohol, into concentrated alcohol, what's going to happen is, is that the alcohol will turn green and the leaves and the stems will start to lose their color. And when you then pour away the alcohol, which is now green, and you replace it with fresh alcohol, then you're kind of washing out um, the, the color, the stain. And that is actually sometimes necessary because if the leaves or the stems are too green, then it's, they're too dark and you're not able to see um, um, a lot, okay? Would we see nothing if unstained? Um, yeah, so, uh, okay, you want to see the difference between stained and unstained. Okay, um, I can do that. Okay, um, not a problem. Yes, you are still able to see something, but not quite as nicely. Yeah, it, it, um, um, you, you do see a little bit, uh, yeah. For example, here, it starts to look a little bit nicer and more contrasty here. Yeah, you see the place where it actually starts to touch the stain. Yeah, um, let's go in here a little bit more yeah you see yeah yeah see that that's that, that's what i meant it, it looks kind of nicer yeah um because the different the, the cell walls become darker let's put the arrow away right yeah and it simply looks a little bit more artistic yeah this way yeah? um can you add a recommendable microtome to your affiliate Amazon links? Um, yeah, if I find one online. I did not, the one that I have over here, I did not find uh, online. I bought it somewhere else. Uh, but if I find one, because sometimes um, you, the, the products um, start to disappear again on Amazon. Sometimes the companies sell them and then they yeah, remove them again. But yeah, so you see, this is actually what I meant. Uh, I think this looks actually much better now. Because you can see that the cells are actually stained much better here. And let's compare this a little bit maybe with uh, with somewhere where on the, maybe on the other side. Yeah. Here. I don't know. Yeah. You see over here, um, it looks brighter. 
somehow. Yeah, not quite as, as contrasty. Yeah, still a little bit, but not quite as yeah. And here on the other side here, yeah, it looks a little bit it looks a little bit better, I think. Yeah. So this is a uh, yeah. So there was was the requ I mean you know what I have to check I have to be really careful that I do not touch the no I'm I'm afraid yeah because here I still have a large large distance but if I now use yet the higher magnification I might actually touch the stain which might be a little bit on the, on the side here right yeah yeah so essentially um, we what do I learn from this here I need to. Um, yeah, probably have um, washed it a little bit too much. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, is uh, before making the next one, yeah, or let's have a look here. Yeah, yeah, you see that here it's a little bit darker. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to, yeah, for the next one I'm going to, yeah, use again one of those here, but I might add a little bit more, more stain again. So, are you able to see this? Yes, okay, good. This, lo this looks kind of okay. I'm going to quickly dry wipe it and put it, it starts to roll up. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to now do the following. I'm going to stain it again. Uh, I should have placed it directly in the center here. And uh, you see, as, it, as it, it, it dries quickly and then it, yeah. So, uh, number one and number two, I'm now going to remove everything here again. Okay. And, yes, yeah, of course, now the danger that it's a little bit too dark. I'm going to do a very co a quick con uh, control check under the microscope without cover glass, without anything. Just to just to see how it looks like, I need to always switch over to the. It's the old one over here, and now that is the one. Yeah, I think this looks better. You see what I meant? Also, the cell walls start to, to appear darker now. This is actually much nicer, I think, because you see the, that some of the cells are staying darker than others, and this I think has to do, as I mentioned before, a little bit of whether the cell is actually cut open or not. So this is actually what I was kind of hoping for. Gives it a little bit more and more color variation. Okay, yeah, so um, in other words, don't rinse it or don't wash it too much. Yeah. So um, I'm going to now remove this again and now I'm going to um, try again the whole thing with the, the mounting medium. The question is now how am I gonna do that? Uh, because I do have to uh, place on here the the drop first. What time is it? Okay, I'm already doing this one hour because I would like to also show you the, the trick combs um, from the leaf that I promised you before. So this is number one. Always close the bottle. It does happen that sometimes you tip it, it tips over. And uh, we put it in here. And uh, it's not in yet. So now it's in. Mm -hmm. I have to wipe this. And uh, here is the clean cover glass. Goes on top. Let capillary action do the rest. Uh, it's not quite centered, but I think it's okay. Yeah. Usually, um, sometimes uh, when uh, there is not enough mounting medium, you can see that it does not spread all the way across. Of course, you can always add a little bit more mounting medium on the side, but generally I leave it like that. Yeah. Um, in most cases, it will be fine. Yeah. Sometimes pressing it does help. Um, if you want to, you can add more mounting medium on the side, um, but I'm not going to do that now. Yeah, um, because actually it's a little bit safer this way. Yeah, so let's have a look. In any case, um, just to have a little control on how this actually looks like. Let me take the other one off first because there is some stain here on the side. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. That's how it looks like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you see that. It looks a little bit better. 
those dark round circles that you see, these are air bubbles, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit blurry. Yup. So a uh, bottom line is, um, in summary, um, if you want to do things like this, then um, um, uh, remove uh, the green pigment first by placing it into alcohol, uh, cut it thinly, and then, um, yeah, there was the question um, also, how does this look like without staining? Okay, um, so, so if you don't have a stain, um, I, by the way, I also tried ink. It didn't work quite as I expected. Yeah? Um, unfortunately, so uh, methylene blue somehow is the stain um, yeah, that I recommend. So, and I'm going to now do the following. I'm going to um, try to make a microtome cut now because some, somebody wanted to know how this actually looks like. I'm going to now make a microtome cut without uh, staining it so that you see it for comparison. Okay, so let me grab this again here. Okay, I need to clamp it in again tightly. Yep, it's a little bit higher. So close this. Um, yeah, let's have a cut. See, it's it's how it's uh, moving back and forth. Not so good. But sometimes it's, it helps to cut the outside first because the outside part is the hardest part. But then again, I don't need to have the whole cross section, okay? Um, a small part is enough just to show you how it looks like. And actually it seems to be a yeah, fairly nice slice. So um, here we go. Um, I put it on here. Um, without stain, I need some water. Um, I'm running out of um, dishes, here is one because I do want to remove, I do want to remove the, the, um, the remaining, I do want to remove the remaining uh, alcohol as well. Okay. Let's wash the pipette a little bit. Okay. So, cover glass goes on top. Cover glass goes on top. So, and this is now the unstained specimen, okay? Just so that you see a little comparison here. Uh, yeah, so that's the stained one, of course. And the unstained one is here. Looks like this. Okay. By the way, this is all bright field, so I'm not using DIC or anything like that, yeah? Let's close the condenser a little bit. I mean, you still see things, okay? And uh, you can also make a permanent mount like this, yeah? But in comparison to this one over here, there's of course a difference. Uh, maybe like this, yeah? yeah so the, this compared to this. Yeah, lots of bubbles. Um, those bubbles, I just need to explain this, um, are there. Uh, this uh, is quite common when you transfer um, something from alcohol uh, to uh, to water, okay? So what you have to do is you have to maybe shake it a little bit and, and uh, uh, give it a little bit more time and then the bubbles will also disappear, yeah? So, but the, these bubbles are there because I, yeah, um, it was directly transferred into alcohol and I did not give it a lot of time. Yeah, so I will quickly go back to the to the comments section. Um, okay. Um, positive and negative stains. I remember reading some time ago about positive and negative stains. Can you explain what this means? Um, I'd have to do a little bit of research on this as well. I know that there is something like counter staining. I don't know if this is what you actually mean um, with that. Uh, yeah, but um, for example, um, I don't know if this refers to positive or negative staining. Sometimes you can, um, for example, in gram staining with bacteria, um, what you do is, is, is that so-called the gram positive bacteria will stain blue black um, and uh, gram negative bacteria, they would be transparent and therefore you have to counter, you have to stain them, counter stain them with red with uh, saffronin. Um, so maybe that is what you mean, but I'll, I'll try to figure out a little bit more than I can talk about this, okay? What are those black circles? These are air bubbles. 
the, the black circles are air bubbles, so which should not be there. Um, but uh, yeah, if you uh, shake the whole thing a little bit, then the air bubbles will go away. Yeah. So um, yeah, I've missed it. But can you put a drop of glue over the specimen, or is this a silly question? Um, I just did that. Okay. Um, when I made a mount here, um, if you want, so I can do a, an, another one, a last one, and then what time is it? Uh, yeah. It's one hour and then I'm going to show you because it kind of looks nice. I'm going to then show you the the um, the trick combs. So this here is the one that I ma just made. Okay, so let's uh, do another one here. Okay, let me remove this here first again. Yeah, because I want to put it back into the... So it goes back. So this here I have to place somewhere for drying. So I put it up here. So I'll do another mount and then maybe we can have a look at it next week again, how stable it actually was. So um, I need a second one here for staining. So let's take, I don't know, maybe, maybe let's take this one here. You cannot see it. So let's take, I don't know which one. Shouldn't be the sick one over here, maybe. I don't know, maybe. Should we try the sick one? It's, it's kind of very sick. Let's put it on here. Um, I'm going to add, oh, I'm going to add again a little bit of stain, more stain, because uh, we've just seen that it was otherwise a little bit too light. So, so I'm, I'm yeah. So maybe this washing step here. Uh, probably was not necessary. Yeah. Let's uh, remove, or oh, I'll do it a different way. I'm just going to use the tissue paper here to remove the stain. Okay. I'm going to do it like this. Carefully use cap. Yeah. And uh, now let's uh, do the mounting again. A little bit of this uh, mounting medium of the glue. Again, this glue I have diluted a little bit with water. Oh, there are bubbles. The difficulty with this glue is that it likes to make, once there's a bubble, there's a bubble, right? Um, usually the bubbles will be pressed out anyway. Here we go. Yeah. But you never know. So let's uh, carefully take this here, and put it directly into the glue, push it down a little bit so that the glue is on top. There is a bubble, which shouldn't hurt too much. So it's on the side. Um, we take a cover glass. Um, yeah, I have to wipe it again. I think I used a little too much glue here, but then it doesn't matter. I will just show you. Yeah. So, and it goes on top. Okay. It's a fairly thick specimen. It's horribly thick, the specimen. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you see, um, sometimes it's good to have a very variation in any case. This is very thick. Um, I'll have a look. Okay. Uh, scope view again. Yeah. It's, pr it's multiple cell layers thick. Oh, too many bubbles. Okay. Hmm. Okay, but doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to simply check how many of them are still there uh, next week, uh, because as sometimes as the the glue dries, sometimes they are being uh, either pushed to the side because of the tensions that uh, that appear. Sometimes they're reabsorbed somehow. Yeah. Uh, not. Yeah. Too many bubbles. Yeah. But there are here some regions that do look kind of nice if you want to take a picture. Okay, but I uh, hope you get the idea. Okay, so let me put this away again here. And uh, yeah, I'll have another check um, in the forum here. Okay, but there are, I think, no... Oh, pop up. Uh, um, do you think you can pull out the air bubbles under the cover slip as a negative pressure? The answer is, the short answer is yes. 
this is actually something that should be done or is being done. You need some kind of a vacuum chamber um, and you're able to actually, yes, do that. And as a matter of fact, this is actually part of the procedure. And you should not only, you cannot only do that with the specimen itself, but actually also with the, the actual mounting medium because there are also dissolved gases in there. So it is actually recommended that you um, use a, a, a vacuum chamber. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Here we got something about positive and negative staining. I found the article, a positive stain is a stain that will be absorbed by the cells or organisms. Okay. A negative stain is absorbed by the background. That's a good. Thank you very much. And this basically means that methylene blue blue is clearly a positive stain because it does react directly with the um, with uh, the specimen. I'm not aware of any negative stains that are, react with the with the mounting medium. Okay. Um, I mean, drop first or specimen first. Um, for what reason? The thing is the following: you want. Uh, so the question is, is when you're uh, mounting, um, what I've done is I put the drop first here, um, and then I put the specimen into it. If you put the specimen first, especially if it's a flat one, right, and then you put the mounting medium on top, then there is the possibility that, especially if the specimen is very flat, that there are um, the, the the mounting medium is not able to reach the bottom side. Okay, uh, but you want to make sure that the mounting medium is around all of the specimen. So what I usually do is I put the mounting medium first, then the specimen, and if the specimen doesn't want to go in, uh, then I add another drop on top. Yeah, but I just want that the specimen is completely surrounded. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, I, I quickly go down here again. Okay. Um, can you send me an email? Yes, of course you can send me an email. Uh, people do that, yeah. Um, so not a problem. So um, yes, last thing today because it's already ten past. Uh, yeah, I'm doing this already one hour and ten minutes, and I usually um, don't want to do it too much longer. Um, but um, those 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 trick combs do actually look quite nice. Okay. And um, what I will be doing therefore is, is I'm, I have to first clean a little bit. Look, there is some methylene blue here as well. So I will be cleaning also the, let's use a tissue paper to also clean a little bit the, the tip here. Okay. So, and um, what I'll be doing now is the following. Um, I want to make a permanent mount of those trichomes. And my email address is editor, editor at microbehunter.com. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully try to remove from the bottom side here. And I don't know if you're able to see this, but there's some fuzzy thing here, some fuzzy stuff here. Okay, and that's what I want. And I'm going to make a permanent mount of this. And without staining. <laughs> this this time and uh, here a small drop again on the middle of the microscope slide and uh, some of this fuzzy material here uh, yeah it's quite a lot really you might not be able to see it it goes in here yeah and here this is now the time when again I have to make sure it's completely covered okay I know it's a little bit awkward uh, when I'm looking down, then you're not able to see my face properly. I know this is a little bit awkward, but, um, but I don't have a solution for this. I was actually even thinking about putting a camera here somewhere on the bottom, but then I'm not, I don't have any desk space anymore. I know it's always, you should always maintain contact, eye contact and look into the camera, but I cannot do that, unfortunately. So, so let's do it like this. So, and I need a cover glass where here, here it is. And I need to wipe it again. Uh, I still see a couple of air bubbles here. Okay. Doesn't matter. And here we go. And those trick combs. Let's have a look. You might uh, recognize them. So where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Need to go down a little bit and let's find them. Ooh, they are still clustered to together. Okay. Uh, I, I should have broken them up better. Uh, they're still clustered together. 
Okay. Maybe you can find a few individual ones. Yeah, here they are kind of floating around. When I first saw them, they looked kind of a little bit scary, almost like 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 spiders or or I don't know, yeah, or insects with extremely long legs. Yeah, they're floating around because the glue is still spreading. And these are the the plant here. Yeah, and uh, let's have a look here, and. Uh, yeah, why not use this here? And let's do the following. Let's give it a little bit of color. So, because I do have a DIC as well. Let's go up with the magnification a little bit. And here, this is how they look like. Yeah. So. Yep. So these are basically also some some interesting um, interesting spend, uh, plant specimens uh, uh, yeah, to look at. Yeah. Um, so a question here: Couldn't you just use some adhesive tape for trichomes, not for permanent slides, but to observe powdery mildew? Okay. Yes, I don't have um, I don't have tape with me right now. It is possible, but tape does not look so nice because. Um, tape can be used. Uh, tape also is used uh, for collecting dust, but the problem, not problem really so much, but um, because the sticky uh, side of the tape is not very smooth. So what you're sometimes seeing is you're, you're seeing kind of bubbles in the glue a little bit. Yeah. So the, the, the quality is, isn't, uh, in, in, isn't always very high. However, however, you might not need that. If you want to do a quick uh, um, assessment of, of, of certain things, yeah, then that's of course possible. I have done this as well. Yeah. Do you think diluting the PVA with more water will result in fewer air bubbles or will it get drying problems? instead um, it could be that if you dilute it, it you will get fewer air bubbles however um, if you dilute it more then the glue is also going to shrink more when it dries okay because the water is gonna re go away and when it shrinks more then this can actually also cause again bubbles appearing and what I found out is is that sometimes the bubbles um, are there um, not only by coincidence, but sometimes um, it depends how hydrophobic the specimen is. So if the specimen is contains a little bit, is a little bit fatty or oily, for example, like like bird feathers, right? Um, then they do not want to get in contact with the water, with the water of the of the glue, and then basically bubbles are more likely. Yeah. So um, it is actually a, a fairly complex thing, uh, which con made of, of, of yeah, several factors. Yeah. Um, but I do probably agree. Yes. Uh, maybe there might be an optimum water concentration. Right. So if if maybe you add more water, it makes it less uh, less viscous. Therefore, you have less bubbles. But then maybe. Uh, maybe there is going to be or there's most certainly going to be more shrinkage during the drying process so i guess there must be somewhere an optimum in between yeah yeah that uh, yeah um so there's another interesting example of negative staining is with uh, chinese black ink you mix it with uh, a frottis of your teeth and then bacteria and shining in contrast with black background ah that's interesting yeah um do you think switching from an Amscope uh, to a Euromax Micro Blue Monocle is a good idea? Um, I really need battery power. I will be honest with you. Uh, most microscopes, um, yeah, if your microscope has a condenser, okay, I think that's the important thing here. But then I would say um, th there will not be huge differences, yeah, in 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 in. Yeah, in, in image quality, I would say, yeah, unless you really make a step upwards, right? Um, so, yeah. Do you have any spores we can ha take a look under the microscope? Well, not not with me right now, uh, somewhere in my cupboard. <laughs> um, but spores um, from fungi, um, for example, or from mold, um, is indeed uh, something that uh, can be seen also quite easily. Yeah? Would gently warming the glue to reduce viscosity work as an alternative to diluting with water? Um, good question. Um, again, here we have to be careful. 
Um, it, it might make it a little bit uh, less uh, viscous. However, if you warm it up, the glue starts to dry faster. And I found out that also this glue very quickly starts to form a, a, a layer, a skin on the surface yeah, um, and dries faster. So again here, um, I think it might, be, it, it depends, I guess, uh, um, yeah, maybe there is some kind of an optimum in between because if you warm it up and it dries faster, then it might actually, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, again uh, have the same result as if there's less water in it yeah so again I, I would say it depends a little bit here okay so they will sell some semi-plant versions of the micro blue so that yeah um, if um, my suggestion is is upgrade only if you actually think really that there is an improvement for your own purposes okay um, so just uh, upgrading for the sake of upgrading I, I probably would not do Okay, but if it does contain some features that uh, yeah you did not have before, then I say why why not? Yeah, so see I, that that's an example here. Yeah, but I wanted to show you, and then I think I'm going to stop for today. Is this, do you see this here? Why it's so dark? Uh, that's because of the air bubble, right? So those uh, trick combs were so close together that um, essentially the glue was not able to reach all of the parts. So what I should have done is I should have mixed it a little bit better to break them apart. Um, so then they would be more separate uh, from each other. Yeah. So people, folks, um, yeah, I think I'm going to call it uh, quits uh, for today. It was again, uh, um, yeah, one hour, 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> I was already worried that I'm not able to have uh, enough material. <laughs> so I prepared some other things here as well. Um, yeah, so, but uh, yeah, I hope that you, you kind of enjoyed this and liked it. I hope uh, that uh, videos like this kind of motivate you a little bit to, to um, also experiment around a little bit. Um, yeah, do check up the videos on my YouTube channel, on this YouTube channel. Um, I do have some shorts. I do have some regular form, uh, long form videos. And um, as I mentioned before, I do also have my second YouTube channel called Micro Hunter Microscopy, which is the more technical channel where I um, uh, usually answer some questions. Um, yeah, it's not quite as active as this one over here. Uh, but if you want to see some microscope review or product reviews or some, some technical talk um, about microscopy, then uh, yeah, the other channel is, is the one that you uh, might uh, want to visit. Okay. Um, I wish you all the best in any case. Um, um, hope to see you again next week. And uh, do keep on checking also the community posts on this channel um, because if something kind of, uh, I've got a time conflict or so, then I will um, announce it in advance uh, if I have to move uh, the, the live stream or not. So enough for today. Have a nice weekend. Uh, happy microbe hunting um, as always. Uh, see you around next time and bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye.